tonight on The South Today. The government's controversial free waters reforms get a new, softer rebrand, but how much has changed? A Kiwi Olympic gold medalist launches a new program aiming to scout some new young talent. And poet Sam Hunt helped inspire some of the paintings in a new art exhibition on Dunedin. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Dave Gooselink. Well, a change in name, but is it a change in policy? The government's announced a reset for its controversial Three Waters reforms, with a few changes along with a rebrand aimed at getting more New Zealanders on board. Ambitious plans to reform the country's Three Waters infrastructure have been a thorn in the side of the Labour government. Karen McAnulty has been tasked with selling the rejigged policy and putting a friendlier face to the plans after taking over from former local government minister Nanaia Mahuta. At a media conference on Thursday, he revealed a reset for the controversial Three Waters legislation. It's now been rebranded as Affordable Water Reforms. Labour says the reforms are needed to help bring the country's water infrastructure up to scratch in a program estimated to cost up to $185 billion. This is the model that we will be taking to the election campaign. So we will uh, put it in place, we will take it to the election campaign. Those who are arguing for something different need to be upfront and honest with New Zealanders about how much extra they're going to be uh, charging them on their rates in order to pay for that. Along with a rebrand, there are a few changes. The government scrapped unpopular plans to set up four mega entities to deliver freshwater, wastewater and stormwater services to households. There will now be ten public water entities across the country, giving local councils more direct engagement with the organisations managing water services on their behalf. Every council will be represented around the table in guiding those local water entities. However, one aspect criticised by many protesters remains unchanged. The controversial 50-50 co-governance of local representative groups between mana whenua and councils. However, Prime Minister Chris Hipkins insists there's no requirement for the entity boards themselves to be co-governed. Labour claims the reforms could save households thousands of dollars a year. But National has dismissed them as broken reforms with a new coat of paint. Across the country, the South today. And the ODT will have reactions and responses from mayors and councils across Otago and Southland to the Three Waters rework in tomorrow's paper. Well, the Dunedin City Council says access for scientists to the Folden Ma fossil site that it bought earlier this year may still be months away. The council announced it had finally acquired the land in February of this year with the aim of preserving it as a scientific and conservation site. The DCC gave an update this week saying ongoing maintenance costs and access would be discussed later in the year. The council began the process of acquiring the 42 hectare piece of land under Mayor Aaron Hawkins in 2019 with the purchase costing ratepayers almost a million dollars. Researchers, including some from Otago University, haven't set foot on the site in around four years. They've been using what was previously gathered from the Ma, but say they're now looking forward to being able to collect some fresh samples. Well, Olympic legend Russell Coots is encouraging young yachting talent to hit the water as he teaches them a thing or two about sailing. The new Inspire program aims to give up-and-coming talent some experience on high-performance boats to help raise the next generation of New Zealand talent. You may not have seen him, but Russell Coots was there on the day, one of the driving forces behind Sail GP and the next generation of New Zealand sailing talent. With the support of Coots, young New Zealanders are taken to the Sail GP Inspire program, a program designed to give New Zealand kids more performance sailing time than they would otherwise get. Inspire's got lots of moving parts to it, so it's something Russell Coots and the team at Sail GP put together, which they run a fantastic event. Uh, they've got the Aries Fevers, which you can see behind me. We've then got some foiling uh, kids out on foiling yachts on the harbour. The Inspire program is more than just about sailing the Aries Fevers. It's the whole sailing package for kids wanting to get seriously involved in the competitive sailing industry. Basically it's to 
get kids into a phase where they can move into roles within professional sailing. So you don't just need to be a sailor to be in professional sailing, you might be a photographer, you might be a reporter, you may be a technical person, there's lots of technical things going on, race officer, etc. So it's really getting kids inspired to get into more sailing. Jones says Coots knows what it's like to begin sailing early. Growing up in Dunedin, he raced P-class yachts as a youth. He's really into this fantastic event from a spectator point of view, but also very much into uh, making sure that uh, it has a future and to, uh, you can build your own future, which is what they're doing. Jones says that once they get the bug, you just can't stop them. Youth taking to the water in droves and guaranteeing a new generation of New Zealand sailors ready to take on the world. In Christchurch, the South today. A well, birthday party for the first European settler in Queenstown was celebrated recently at a hotel named after him. William Rees is considered by many to be the founder of the resort town. The Rees Hotel in Queenstown has honoured their namesake, putting on a 196th birthday party for William Gilbert Rees. He was the first European settler at Lake Wakatipu, arriving with his wife Frances in 1861. This year is particularly special for the resort town, being 160 years since Queenstown was named. Queenstown Lakes District Councillor Matt Wong had the responsibility of cutting the large chocolate cake to honour the man considered the founding father of the area. In Queenstown, the South Today. Well, Dunedin residents may notice a subtle nod to a characteristic peninsula pub in the city's public art gallery this month. An exhibition by New Zealand painter Dame Robin White showcases iconic paintings from across her career, which spans more than half a century. Different paintings with different settings, all lined up for show. A range of works by contemporary New Zealand painter Robin White are on display at the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. In the exhibition, something is happening here. Dame Robin studied fine arts in Auckland before moving south from Paramatta to the Otago Peninsula in the 1970s. I come down to Dunedin just on a visit and just fell in love with the beauty of the peninsula and decided that I would really like to look for a place. Indonesia. Her works have been widely celebrated in a number of international exhibitions, including collaborative pieces from across the Pacific. Some works came out of a friendship struck up with New Zealand poet Sam Hunt, who proved to be a great muse. Sam came and visited from time to time, and on one of those visits I did drawings and took photographs and uh, created this painting, Sam Hunt at the Portobello Pub. After seeing Hunt read a poem about his grandfather, Dame Robin was inspired to merge his character with the local Dunedin scenery. And the idea of a bar in a pub has quite a big role in that poem. And so I thought, ah, Sam at the Portobello pub. That's a nice kind of little link. The exhibition of Dame Robin's works is open to the public at the Dunedin Public Art Gallery until June. In Dunedin, the South today. FIA RQNA still to come on the South today. Of course, stu school students get a new flying start, a f flying skill to practice indeed. And the Soil Sisters prepare to entertain and educate at a wild nature festival. Easter weekend's been and gone, but there are still some sweet savings to be had at my mate John's. So hop along to John's Easter Double Dipper. There's 30% off beds, 25% off lounge, and 20% off everything else, plus paid off interest free. Easter Double Dipper must end this weekend at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street. Where did you get that furniture from? Stafford Street. And my mate John.
Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line, every time. Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third, third, third finance, or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Welcome back. Well, an unusual activity at a rural primary school is giving some pupils the chance to take part in a leadership program. New Frisbee golf baskets have been installed opposite Gore Main School, with the principal hoping it'll encourage more kids to try out the growing sport. Pupils enjoying a day out in the park, putting their skills to the test, trying out a new activity. Four new Frisbee baskets were unveiled in Dolomore Park, across the road of Gore Main School, hoping to attract pupils to the growing sport. So now that we have the, uh, the four nets right across the road, I think, um, yeah, at the, the sport of frisbee golf at Gore Main School is going to go to another level. The obscure game is much like normal golf. Players attempt to throw their frisbee into the basket in the least amount of shots possible. Gore Main School are using the new baskets as an opportunity for their leadership program getting Year 5 pupils to teach the younger children how to throw a disc. It's all about your technique and wrist flicking. You've got to flick your wrist quite hard if you want to get straight and quite a bit of power when you need it. The Youth Council were heavily involved in the project, also having plans to put more disc golf baskets around the district. In Gore, the South Today. Well, environmentally themed event, the Wild Dunedin Festival of Nature opens in the city tomorrow. Among the many family-friendly shows taking place over the festival are a local singing group who combines song with an earthy message. Singing dirty ditties, but it's not what you might think. The Soil Sisters are children's entertainers who are busy rehearsing songs for their show, Subterranean Tales. Storyteller and puppet wrangler Caitlin McMullen says the show's about organisms that live in the dirt and how to care for them. So it's all about what's happening underneath our feet and we've got all these incredible organisms. We've, we've all been learning along this journey about what's happening in the earth and how to really look after our soil organisms. The show uses stories and songs to convey an environmental message, assisted by colourful puppets, including a fat earthworm called Herman the Worm and a very cheeky monkey who loves heroes. He's just got a fascination with superheroes, so of course we have to introduce him to the worms because the worms are the superheroes of our planet. The Soil Sisters are set to perform next week with two daytime shows at the Dunedin Botanic Garden on Tuesday and another performance at Tohura Otago Museum on Thursday morning. In Dunedin, the South Today. Now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The government rebrands its three waters reforms, announcing ten public water entities but retaining co-governance. Russell Coots has launched his new Inspire program aimed at giving young people more boating experience. 
And an exhibition showcasing the career of Kiwi painter Dame Robin White is on display at Dunedin's Public Art Gallery. And now taking a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, we welcome editor Barry Stewart. Hello Dave. Kia ora. Uh, how do southern leaders feel about the changes to uh, Three Waters, the reforms, or the shake-up, as some said previously? Uh, our reporter Grant Miller has the answers in the paper tomorrow. Mixed bag from across what, eight, eight or so mares we've got? Eight or so mares, yes, and we have reaction from them all, and, and a mixed reaction uh, mm. to, uh, to that question. Hear that. So have a look at that tomorrow. Uh, Dunedin Rotary Club has... Uh, raised sixty thousand dollars for a new kindergarten but happens to be in Vanuatu so oh. uh, with the help of other South Island clubs they've uh, managed to raise that money and they're uh, doing that uh, that venture so uh, good effort there decent amount of money yeah. and uh, an exciting thing on our inside out page uh, tomorrow um, feature writer Kim Dungey has a look at a Wanaka home uh, inspired by nature quite impressive so have a look for that one interesting thanks okay. Barry thank you now it's time for a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoleMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Starting with the situation, a few days of nor'easterly airflow lie ahead as high pressure builds east of the South Island and low pressure troughs continue to swirl in the eastern Tasman Sea. Heading to the top of the South Island, expect fresh nor'easterlies up here Nelson and Greymouth heading for 18, and showers, Christchurch cloudy and 15 degrees. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, Ashburton and Timaru can expect nor uh, fresh nor'easterlies and showers with 15 degrees, just cloudy in Omaru with nor'easterlies and 14 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes and those nor'easterlies will be moderate across the region here. Some cloud in Wanaka and Queenstown heading for 16 degrees. Alexandra one back on 15. Heading further south and things whip up a bit more here. Gusty nor'easterlies that will be mostly fine though in Balclutha and Gore with highs of 16 degrees. In the Catlins cloudy and 14 degrees. Down to the deep south and cloudy tonight in Invercargill with light winds. Mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with fresh breezy nor'easterly winds, a high of 18 and a low of 8. Similar weather on Saturday, heading for 19 degrees and a low of 9. And finally heading to Dunedin, cloudy tonight with nor'easterly winds and a low of 10 degrees. Cloudy and cool tomorrow with fresh breezy nor'easterlies, but a few brief sunny periods are possible during the afternoon, hopefully. Looking for 14 is your high and down to 10. On Saturday morning there'll be low cloud at first. That should clear and become fine and sunny for most of the day. Fresh to strong breezy nor'east winds, a high of 16 and a low of 11 degrees on Saturday. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. Follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our bulletins on demand. And follow The South Today NZ on Facebook to catch our favourite local stories. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.